Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about is it a good idea for Wizards of the Coast to let GameStop host Magic Tournament. Now GameStop also owns, there's multiple GameStop near me of course, and in the mall, the Deerbrook Mall, there is a store called Dink Geek, and it is the commercialization of geek culture. It's a relatively big store, at least where I live, and it would have enough space to have magic tournaments. Now, these wouldn't be huge events like pre-release events, but it definitely could hold a FNM, an 8 to 12-person FNM. I could see that being possible. Now, one of the interesting questions is, why did they not do this sooner? Because by linking themselves to GameStop, they can sync. And that's really important for corporations. So imagine Starbucks or McDonald's. Every experience or every order at Starbucks and McDonald's is pretty much more or less the same within a margin of error because they have an operations manual. And a lot of money has been spent optimizing not just the food, but the training. So McDonald's employees, Walmart employees, these large corporations, they get certain training. I always felt that it was kind of strange that the judges are kind of, judges are not trained. The way that you train a judge is they have to find a mentor. But the way that mentor found someone was he found another mentor. So people are not it's not the same. There's no system in place. Um, one local game star could be a sexual predator. The other one could be a priest. Like there's no, okay, this is how you run magic events. But with GameStop, they train their employees the same. They, the employees know what to buy at. They know what to sell at. They know what to price at. They know uh, what specials to say. I was at GameStop just the other day and the guy just kept saying the same thing over and over again. Oh, new uh, new game coming out, new game coming out. Put, I forget what game it was. I think it was Spyro, but I don't know if that's correct. And that's how they do it because they've been trained to do it that way. The same thing with Think Geek. I used to go with my friend Austin a lot uh, to visit the store and all the employees are trained the same way to pretty much say, buy one, get one free t-shirt. Buy one, get one free, I mean, I doubt they want to say it, but they do have to say because it's in the employee manual. Now, when you go to your local game store, it's hit or miss. You could have some fantastic local game stores, and then you could have some really, really bad ones uh, because there's no training. There's no set guideline. Magic the Gathering will eventually, and most companies will move towards a system where every FNM you go to will be the same experience. Uh, the judges will be qualified exactly the same. You're not going to have the randomness that you have today where some FNMs are very clean and some FNMs are not clean. It's kind of going to be more of a franchise model, which GameStop is, where the franchise, the person who buys the GameStop has to, it has to have a certain level of clean, uh, it has to be clean, it has to be presentable, the prices have to be set in some way. Uh, they're given a buy list. Same with every game store. Like one game store could give you 10% a buy list and another one could give you 50. It is quite uh, fascinating in terms of when you look at Magic the Gathering and you look at how its operation, uh, its operation is based on just random people with no training. These are local store owners. And you look at GameStop or you look at um, you know, Think Geek or any corporation. And the reason they do that is it prevents liability. And I think Wizard of the Coast has just realized what a big liability they have with the judge system. They now, of course, they have tried to shift the liability onto the game stores, but that might not be enough because uh, you often cannot shift liability. Um, even if you want to, even if you publicly say on the, online that, hey, we're not liable for background checks. These people are liable for background checks. Trust me when I say this, GameStop employees undergo background checks. They must. Every GameStop employee undergoes a background check. Not every magic judge does that. 
In fact, most magic judges do not want to do that. Uh, they have been openly hostile against that idea. And when you talk about, hmm, if I own a company and everyone in my, I know that the system tells my uh, workers or owners or my franchisees to that they must get a background check on each employee and they do that, then I feel a lot safer because at least I did my due diligence than the system where their coast is under. And I do have quotations before uh, screenshots before they take all this stuff down because there is legal ramifications to what I've screenshot in the second video where they talk about a judge being part of customer service. So I found a document and the document pretty much said a judge is part of customer service. That is fascinating on many aspects, right? So I don't, so let's talk about where this information came from. It came from Rudy from Alpha Investments. I'm not sure where he's getting or hearing this from. Or, and in the past, I believe he said that GameStop might buy Magic the Gathering or Magic the Gathering might be sold. I mean, sell it when it's hot, right? I mean, I don't think Magic is going to be more valuable in the future uh, given its competitors are mainly eSports, which... And I know their competitor. They know their competitors are esports because they have tried to brand themselves as esport. They wouldn't do that if they didn't actually believe their competitors are esports. So you have a logical conclusion where a GameStop solves a lot of legal and operational headaches. Um, so how can Magic make sure that every player's experience is relatively the same? Well, every GameStop is the same. So why don't we train our employees to run events? And that's what I, I like about this model a lot more because these people are getting paid to do the training. You might complain about how much they're getting paid, maybe they're getting paid too little, but they're still being compensated in money and they are employees. And when you are an employee, you have to submit to, if you don't want to, if you don't want to clean after yourself, if you don't want to, if you want to be rude to customers, you'll be gone. Now, a judge, because a judge is a volunteer, unless somebody posts on him on Reddit, he's in a position of power. It's kind of like being in the dark, right? If you're an employee of GameStop and you did something bad, let's say uh, harassment of some type, then the customer will report you directly to the boss and the boss will probably let you go. Or if the boss doesn't let you go, and then you report it directly to GameStop. Here, there's no system like that. Yes, you can report the Wizards of the Coast, but what can they do? It's a volunteer program. They have said many times in legal documents, which I'll show you, that this is a volunteer program. So they don't have any control over this person. Uh, they have as much control over this judge legally. Now, they're in practice, it's a little different, right? They actually do have a lot of control over how uh, what events they can do they do have a control of how much money they can make which is zero but it's fa it's very fascinating because you're talking about a very archaic system of judges and local game stores and every single one of these stores is different from each other you know how one store gives fnm promos is different from another store how one place uh, determines you know price split is different from another store there is no and that's why some people go to one store and not the other store but in GameStop if they go of GameStop and I trust me when I say this if they go GameStop every local card business will go out of business GameStop just has too many locations and they are ruthless in margins and that is very good for business so I mean they're going to make more money they already make more money but if they dipped into the magic and you know and they have all these really great sales like they have sales for like 50 cent pack magic cards once during christmas time and this happens every year so i'm positive wizard of the coast would be willing to sell magic cards at severe discounts if gamestop is willing to buy in and if gamestop is actually the owner of it then you're talking about actually printing money right and if you don't believe me if you don't believe that this is actually probably going to happen, look at Walmart. 
I saw Eternal Masters, Iconic Masters, Unstable in still Walmart. Not a bad buy, actually. I would actually say Unstable is not a bad buy for $4 a pack at Walmart right now. It's around $120, $140 a box, so it's pretty close. And then you have all these other sets. Masters 25 I saw recently. Do you think that is a move that encourages more local game stores, or do you think that's a move to discourage them? I would say it absolutely is a move to discourage them because you're hitting their profit margins. But you know, like to survive, it has. If you want to be a game store, and I looked at the model, I looked at the data, you have to do e-commerce. There is no other way. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.